Oh. What are you doing? You caught me. With my bin. Uh, I was just putting this Splash Ultimate windshield wash in it. <laughs> Isn't that what normal people do on nope. the weekend? Nope. Mm -mm. Okay, folks. I've got something stupid for you. <laughs> I've already seen it 50 times on YouTube, so I figured I'd give it my own spin. And, uh... We're going to start off by measuring how much this stuff actually weighs. This is minus 35 windshield wiper fluid. And uh, this is supposed to basically not freeze until minus 35 or below. So the reason for that is because I'm going to stuff a bunch of this stuff in the tires of my tractor. And I'll go over it more shortly. But I just wanted to prove to you that it weighs so much. Google was saying that this weighs as much as water. Now, this is either less than a gallon or the water is actually a little bit heavier than this. I have a really hard time believing that water is heavier than this, um, but I would totally believe if it was less than a gallon. So we're just under eight pounds, we're 7.9 pounds. Uh, Google said it was supposed to be 8.34, which is kind of a bummer because all my calculations are based on 8.34 pounds per gallon. And this is supposed to be, how much is this? Is it actually oh, a gallon? What is this weigh? How much is it? Three, it's one U.S. gallon, or 3.785 liters. Hmm. So I guess we're going to find out. The only reason I ended up with minus 35 is because it was like 9 cents more than the minus 20. And uh, obviously I wasn't going to pay for beet juice because that was just ridiculous. And I had to pay shop rates and all this stuff. And I said, forget that. I'm going to do it myself like everybody else on YouTube. And unfortunately, it could get to minus 35 yeah, it could here. Easily get so... to minus 35. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to take this upstairs and I'll show you the process and I'll show you from start to finish. Okay, so that first one was 7.9 pounds. I'm going to show you how I get to this process and why it matters. But I'm just numbering these because I want to see if we can take an average and then also we'll know a count as we go. I'm not going to do this for every bottle, but just to show you guys how I figure this stuff out. It's not really like a super analytical method, but I could tear or I could zero. I'm going to zero in this case. If you guys didn't already know, I work on industrial scales for a living. That's how I end up with this high quality scale. Over the years, you run into lots of broken scales and people want them out of there. So just take broken stuff and make something useful out of it. So this is number two. So we're measuring uh, how much is in this container. We zeroed the scale with the empty vessel for the first one, and now we, we zeroed off the first batch of liquid. So in the first one was 7.9 pounds, okay? So this one here, and we're gonna use this too. So that's 7.85 pounds. So what I'm finding out, so 7.85 pounds. And that's the net product inside of here, okay? So we'll just keep doing that for all four of these real quick. Now you could do this on a bathroom scale, you don't need anything super fancy. And to be honest with you, it's not gonna change my mind on doing this process, um, but it's it's still helpful to have good hey, wait. information. Hey, zero year. Oh yeah, thank you, yep. camera crew. I almost missed that. So I'll just zero it again. And then the only thing is, I don't want to fill this up so much that I can't get my sump pump in there. And you're probably thinking, why are you using a sump pump, Brian? You could do this with gravity. <laughs> that is true. You can do this with gravity. But I figured for $35, I had one on sale. I'm going to get the $35 unit. It's going to be way easier. And I'll just show you how this works. And then, according to my calculations, which come from um, basically online, there's charts you can get that will show you what your size, your tire uh, we'll take this was 7.85 as well okay so it's looking like the average is 7.85 and uh, I hope I was expecting 8.3 pounds but that's still a small difference okay 8.3 pounds compared to 7.9 is still decent now I don't want to make this zero so zero zero thank you again camera <laughs> crew sorry I don't want to make this so full I can't get the sump pump in there but honestly, this is worth the test. So all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to measure how much weight these things actually generate. And there's going to be no evaporation inside of the tire. These things won't hurt your rims from everything I've done for research on them. Um, so we should be okay there. And minus 35 is pretty good. Mine's going to be parked in a garage. If yours was parked outside, you may have to get like the RV... Um, 
stuff. This is 7.85 again. So the average is 7.85. Well, it's not actually 7.85. It's like 7. Uh, eight six. Eight six. <laughs> but it's definitely not 8.34 no. like Google said. So I don't know if there's just enough alcohol in these that the alcohol is maybe a little bit lighter than the water. But one way or another, um, this is this is the way we're going to do it. We're going to do it in an analytical fashion. And then you guys can derive what you want to derive out of all the hard work, pain, and suffering that I put into it, which is basically just overanalyzing it like crazy. So we'll yes. pause it and come back. Yes. So this is, this is like your get out of jail free card, guys. So I zeroed off the scale, keeping in mind that this package has not been considered. So whatever this package weighs is going to be added to the value. So I'm gonna just zero the scale so you can see. I plan on getting eight of those in each of the back tires. Actually 8.4 is what I've been told by the uh, chart I looked up. And then on the front tires, I'm gonna get between three and four. So I believe I got 22 and then later I went back and got another two. Um, and I'll show you all my pricing and everything. But this lid is gonna help keep this thing solid. Because as you can see, that's 33 and a half pounds. Um, I would say that this container is probably about a half a pound. So we just added 33 pounds and we're going to do that twice on each side. So basically we're going to be adding, what is that, like about a 120. I've got the numbers on paper and I'll show you that. The reason I picked this container is it has a flat bottom and I'll show you that too. So we'll come right back. Okay guys, so this is going to be our camera crew shortly. My camera crew is threatening to abandon me. It's gonna make me sad. So real quick, we got a little heat lamp set up here. This was actually purchased for the chickens. Trying to and hatch the we're tubing. Trying, trying to hatch the tubing so it's nice and soft and supple. And um, these are the bricks. That's the other thing I'm gonna talk about. And then these are, these tools I didn't buy. And then these things came from the airplane the other day. I'm gonna use those to pinch off the, the hose, which I'm gonna show you real quick. Okay, first things first. Three options for ballasting the tractor. I came up with this page like this. Just I start a notepad and I start making notes. And we've got this 1025R, uh, John Deere 1025 subcompact. It's a 1025R, it's got a loader on the front and some accessory on the back all the time. I've either got a, a, a blade or a ballast box. The ballast box empty is 88 pounds. So my three different options I came up with was ballast box with, with something in it. The option two was wheel weights from John Deere. The starter kit is 70 pounds per wheel. So that's 375.59, which is ridiculous. And that does not include sales tax. I don't know if they give me that tax exempt or not. Um, technically, those wheel weights would be involved with agricult agricultural use. So I believe we could get those tax exempt. Uh, just kind of depends on your application. You may have to pay sales tax. I, I may be able to get out of it. I'm not sure. Uh, option three is liquid filled into the tires for ballast. And so I just took a bunch of notes. I went and did a bunch of research, watched some guys on YouTube. I found out the things I liked about what they did and the things I didn't like about what they did. And I merged them into my own little mixed up ball of wax. So I spent 97.18 total on all the product that I bought for this project. That tub was in our basement. I didn't add that to the list because it was just, I literally stole it from my wife. When I'm done, I'll wash it with warm water and give it back to her. <clears throat> And then yes. this heat lamp, I did not include in that because it may not be so cold when you're doing this. Uh, this just happened to be sitting here. Again, not trying to mislead. I did not include this in the $97. I did include the pump, which I will open up and show you what that's made of. This is, this is the crappiest pump I could find that had a regular um, three-quarter MPT uh, hose outlet on it okay so it just takes a regular uh hose barb so like you know regular hose that you, you water your grass with did you include and that in your price i did include the pump in the price i did not include the hose because we're going to use this hmm. this is one quarter inch this is one quarter inch inside diameter folks not outside now why is inside diameter important the inside diameter of course all these people on youtube forget to tell you all the details because you know i thrive on details that's how i make a living and that's how I know my wife. <laughs> this is this is a valve stem, okay? It doesn't look like it's gonna work very well. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna, I'll take this in so you can see it, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna screw this in as though it were actually designed to be like that, which it's not. Now you'll note that this is a 10 foot long length of it, okay? 
This is gonna hold on nicely. If it doesn't hold on nicely, I got two of these things, which I will probably return because I don't think they're even gonna bite um, enough to actually clamp onto that. And furthermore, I don't think you're gonna need to. So keep in mind, you can get this little burp breather thing that you can get from Slime that Slime makes. Slime is a brand name of, of inner tube company. Um, they sell that for about $10.50 or $11. And it gives you a hose to quarter inch, um, just a air filling uh, valve stem thread. And what that'll do is that'll allow you to hook a hose straight up from your sump pump or whatever filling mechanism you're gonna use. It's got a little uh, burping breather on it. I think it's unnecessary because all you're gonna do is you're gonna lift this thing out of the water and you're gonna let the air overwhelm the pump by shutting it off, okay? Then it's gonna unprime the line, it's gonna blow the air out, and it's gonna do its burping that way. So I'll show you that in live action, but this is the bare minimum you need. You need this, and you need this if you're gonna use this method, okay? So you could hypothetically put a hose into the bucket too. You know, it's really, it, it, you could just drop this into the bucket. You could eliminate this and you can use gravity to do this. But it's a more complicated process. I just wanna save the trouble. So as you can tell, I'm really big about saving trouble. <laughs> so anyway, this stuff's warming up while we move on. Now that you kind of have a, a quick list of the breakdown of what we bought, I'm just gonna show you this, okay? This is my super nice list. I've blacked out the information about our credit card. This shows what we paid for everything. They screwed up the price because I went to Menards. It was like a Saturday night and uh, they had the prices out for the following Sunday. And so I went to ring up and it rang up as a normal price. It was supposed to be like a buck more for that stuff. So I got the minus 35 for like almost a buck off. It's like 96 cents each. It was like only eight or nine cents more than the 25. Minus exactly. 25. So the minus 25 stuff was $1.89. This was $1.97. So I'm yep. like, what am I, why would I even consider it? So an extra 15 degrees below zero is a big deal in Iowa. Yep. Um, we will break below zero frequently, but it's not going to typically go below minus 20. So we shouldn't need that. Just wanted to show you that. If you need to look at this stuff, pause the video, go to Menards, wherever you're going to buy it. The prices are going to change by the time you see this more likely. Um, that might have been like a Black Friday special. I don't know. None of this other stuff I got on sale. Uh, this is just a regular price. It's the crappiest tool I could find at Menards, okay? It's a valve stem removal tool. So what that does, if you don't know about valve, valve stems, there's this little thing inside the valve stem, okay? This housing just passes into the, the body of the wheel, okay? And then that's the actual valve. So you can take that valve out and then it's just a hole into the tire. So that's what we're gonna take out with this little tool. It happens to come with the valve stems itself. So, see that? Valve cores, not valve stems. This is a valve stem, that's a valve core. So we're gonna take those things out and then that will allow us to uh, basically hook up the hose and force stuff into the tire. And we'll talk more in detail about this as we go. But the next step is gonna be to set up my camera crew that loves me. <laughs> And we're gonna get this thing set up off camera because it's not rocket science. It's literally a sump pump. You plug it in the wall and it shoots water through a hole. So anyway, if you guys really wanna see an unboxing, I won't do a video for it. So sorry about that. Coming back in just a minute, hang tight. Hi YouTube, I'm back. Filming by myself, wallowing in my sorrows. Um, we're just basically gonna have to get this thing done on our own. And I'm going to open this sump pump and get this thing set up. And I got to thinking, boy, this is kind of a YouTube channel that shows how to do things. So I guess I kind of feel bad not showing you how to do things. So here goes nothing. Wow, look at that. One inch minimum depth and uh, the anti-airlock anti hole. Okay, all right. I don't know if we have to drill that. I'm not going to read these instructions. That's way too much work because I'm not using the sump pump. I'm using it to move some stuff into tires. So if you buy one of these, this was pretty cheap. It was like 35 bucks. Uh, it's probably not the best thing in the, you know, in the sump pump world. It's actually more of like a utility pump to, you know, make a fountain or whatever for your koi pond or whatever. The good thing is I believe it's a submersible unit and uh, that will work to our advantage because that's exactly what we're gonna be doing with it. Uh, 
pretty easy to get the packaging taken apart. No foam involved. Uh, it seems to be in good shape. You've got this little thing here. Yep, that's your, that's your anti-siphon hole. So when you lay this down, you can see kind of the height you're gonna to have to have the fluid so that it can get into the intake. And then of course you've got a, a big long cable, which is super nice. Um, for $35, I'm super surprised. It's got a nice long cable. Um, and then there's a stream relief up here. I'm really actually pretty impressed with the way this looks. So we'll see how that goes. This of course would be if you were using um, you know, like a barb fitting and uh, so nothing super special there. This would be like the female variety of the hose coupler. We're not gonna use that because we're taking this part, which is a Sioux Chief part. Of course, I got that at Menards as well. So if you're really concerned, I may try to link to some stuff on Amazon uh, that will get you the same exact item. This thing is rated to pump through a hose, so it is possible that the pump isn't gonna be too happy about pumping through such a small line, but we'll find out. That's why you watch YouTube videos so you can see other people fall flat on their face and look like idiots. So anyway, we're gonna stick this on here. And I say that facetiously, guys. Okay, so that fits perfectly, very good. And of course, we got this big warning label. So we're actually gonna leave the warning label on there today. Normally I wouldn't, I would take that off as, as quick as I got the thing, because uh, I hate those things that was getting away. This thing is warmed up to where it's supple and uh, pretty nice. I'm gonna warm up the wire now. Um, yeah, this red light doesn't really help for visibility at all, I know, so I apologize in advance for that. But all we need is basically to have this nice and supple. These things have a tendency to be a little bit firm when they're cold, and so this is in our garage, so it is gonna be a little bit cold. So let's see if this fits. I'm gonna use the Sioux Chief label down here, and the reason I'm choosing to do that is because if I wanna thicken this up, so I can use one of these pipe clamps or hose clamps and get a little extra material out of that. Those barb fittings are gonna make it a real bear cat to get this thing off if I need to get it off. So what's on there? I don't think there's any problems with that. That feels nice and secure. Um, I guess at this point I could plug it in and just, you're not supposed to run these things dry, but I'm gonna run them dry anyway. Sounds like it's working to me. When you, when you say don't run it dry, it's they mean don't run it for a period of time. You can test the thing. It's not going to hurt it if you run it for two seconds. It's going to hurt it if you run it for like two minutes because then you're going to heat everything up and the components that are made of plastic in China are probably going to melt and catch on fire. So anyway, the next step for us is going to be to basically walk over and plug this in to our fluid. And I will show you the next step is actually going to be to take out the valve stem on one of the tires. I think what we're going to do in this case is we'll go ahead and start with the front tire and uh, we'll get that going. Incidentally, my ballast box, the other weight idea I had was to use these regular red bricks. So we got those from our father-in-law. He had some extra line around the house, so we had no money tied up in that. And uh, per our schedule here, we're gonna add 550 pounds. That's actual weight. Um, the top row is the only estimation because we have a half row where we're gonna have bricks this way instead of bricks this way. So that should yield us about 500 to 550 pounds of additional weight that's going to be cantilevered over the tail of the vehicle. That does take up the three-point hitch, and it does get a lot of weight way back. That's important. Um, if you were to use lead, just to give you an idea, uh, which is pretty impractical because it's expensive, that would, that would give you 2,800 pounds if you could get that in there with no wasted space. And steel, if you could get it in there with no wasted space, you'd have 1,196 pounds in that ballast box. That's pretty good um, per my calculations. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Just put it in the comments below. Now, if you were to put water in there and you could get a vessel to catch the water in that ballast box, you could actually add a pretty good amount of water, but only about 250 pounds worth. So the density makes a big difference. Now, why are we using water in the tires? Because you can't get that other stuff in the tires, guys, seriously. Unless you could get lead shot maybe into the tires, which would cost a fortune, fortune, guys. So anyway, so we're basically doing uh, the option that's gonna add us 200 pounds today. That's gonna be in all four tires. Yes, the front tires and the back tires. Back tires are gonna yield us approximately 140 pounds. I know I told you this earlier, it's gonna be about 69.22 based on an 8.34 pound gallon. So we're actually 7.9 or 7.85 pounds. So this estimation is just slightly high. I may go, go ahead and update those values. Again, Google, you failed me on that. 
My apologies, folks. But we're gonna be adding approximately more or less 200 pounds, okay? That's just the way it is. If I can get more weight in there, I'm gonna do it. And then later on, if we still have trouble with traction and things like this or safety when we're trying to do heavy loading with the loader, then we'll go ahead and spend the 380 bucks and we'll get the, the counterweight starters, or excuse me, the uh, 70 pound starter weight kit. Um, those will accept an additional 50 and then I believe possibly a second 50, but you're talking like a thousand bucks by the time you do all that. So definitely do not want to do that as your first recourse. A um, couple things to keep in mind is that you will get to keep those uh, for future tractor use, potentially the ballast box. Again, you'll be able to keep that for future tractor use in our case, because we're going to be taking hay. We don't want to go too crazy on the weight. Okay. So now let's uh, switch gears back to the uh, valve stem tool. Okay. So this tool allows you to, and I'll just show you um, in an easy fashion. I can show you up here. If I can find my valve stem, this has a tap. So you could actually uh, tap the outside of the valve stem. You can clean up the inside. You can remove the actual inside part, which is the valve core, or you can, um, you can tap, I believe you can tap the inside where these valve cores go in. So this is how you remove the valve stem uh, core. So we're gonna go ahead and do that next. All right, folks, so we're back with the 10, 1025R. This is the loader, that's the loader number. And we've got the, the tools laid out, we've got the tires here, what we're gonna be adding weight to. We've got, got our air line pulled over, so when we're done, we can go ahead and air these tires back up. And uh, basically the, the first step, once you kind of get everything set up, is you're gonna have to um, get this thing up to the top so that when you fill the liquid into the tire, it doesn't come out the, the valve stem, okay? We gotta take out the valve stem, and we also gotta jack this machine up. Now, if I had a loader, I could just go ahead and use the loader outriggers to push it down and uh, get the weight off the tires. Excuse me, if I had an excavator back here, I could do that. The three-point attachment doesn't have down pressure, it just floats. So on the front, you could use the loader to lift up for the front wheels, which I'll do when I do the front wheels, and I probably won't bore you with it. But on the back, what we're gonna have to do is we'll have to jack it up. So we'll just use like a regular jack, and that's the next thing I'll do is I'll grab that and get that set up and uh, show you how that works because we're gonna have to lift it up from the back end here. And before I forget to show you guys, this is the, the valve stem I had earlier. So I'll just show you this quick so you can see it. This is when you use this little removal tool. Okay, so this removal tool will go in here. It's got this little key on it that allows you to reach into that slot on either side. And what you can do is you can take that and then twist this and watch what happens, guys. I don't know if you've ever seen this. A lot of these things, on YouTube, people take for granted that you know it all, and uh, I certainly don't, so I don't expect you to know it all. I'm learning as I go on a lot of these projects here with this new homestead farming sort of stuff. Okay, so there's your valve stem, so that's actually the valve that allows air to pass through or doesn't. So pretty cool, and then of course you've got a hole, and you can see my hand in the background. Okay, so if you haven't ever seen that, now you know. And then of course, to reinsert it at the end of the process, you'll just screw it in just like a regular screw or bolt. Okay, so you'll just go until it kind of bottoms out a little bit. And then basically, when you're ready to fill your air, you can go in here and, and do that just like usual. So we'll go ahead and pick it up with the jack next. Okay folks, so we just need to free up both of these wheels so we can get the differential to release so we can spin the wheels uh, to the 12 o'clock position and also take the weight off of it. I don't want to scrape up the paint, so I'm going to throw a little bit of cardboard on here. And basically, we just bring this jack back. Probably just go right under this frame here. Got to tighten this, tighten this up. I'm assuming you guys have a jack if you're into a tractor of this nature. I mean, I suppose it's possible you don't have one. If you don't, I don't mean to leave it off the list of things you need for this project, but. Um, if you have this tractor and you don't have a jack, why don't you just go ahead and get one because you're going to need it. Someday something's going to break and you're not going to have to call somebody to replace a tire. Okay, so just take the weight off the tractor. It doesn't need to be way off. And you'll see that we can spin it free. So I just assume keep it as close to the ground as possible for safety reasons. And you'll notice it doesn't really want to go too far. Probably because we have a brake on. Uh, so 
I'm not sure exactly the easiest way to do this. Maybe I just got to do it a little harder. Feels like a lock. So I've got my loader bucket down on the ground to keep it from rolling. So I'll just go ahead and hop up here. In my case, I think I have to release the brake. Make sure there's no rolling. There is no rolling. And so we'll go ahead and hop back down. See, now we can spin it free. So you are gonna to wanna to be able to spin your tires free. And if you can't spin your tires free, you're gonna to wanna to get it set up so that you can, okay? So we'll try to make this as simple as possible. And uh, we'll go through the process as step-by-step -step as possible, which is gonna take forever. All right, guys, so we got things laid out where they need to sit. Got a bucket to sit on. That'll get me down to where I need to be. Can spin this free. Obviously, we can tell these don't have any fluid in them because I'll go ahead and run it around here and just show you. So there's air coming out. I'm going to test the air pressure first. Uh, this is the lowest quality uh, air pressure gauge I could get. And looks like we're about 15 PSI here. So what I'm going to do is the first step is I'm going to go ahead and take off the valve stem uh, core. So this is where you just don't lose it. This is going to let the air pressure out pretty quick. So I'm just going to go ahead and I don't want to lose the bead. That's where it sits around the rim here. I assume you guys probably know some of these things, but so just bear with me for those of us that don't have any of the knowledge about this stuff yet. So there's the air coming out. You gotta set that valve core up here. I'm gonna turn this tire around so it's pointed up at the 12 o'clock position. And that way the liquid will be able to go in without coming out. Okay, so I hear the tires kind of squishing. So now I'm actually gonna, before it runs out of air pressure, because it'll be a little easier to do this with something pushing against me. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this on here. It's going, it's a little bit challenging. I'd like to be able to twist it. So I'm gonna to try to twist it and that, that makes it quite a bit easier. So we're gonna be doing this for a little bit. So I'm gonna to try to get it so that it's easy to get on and off. Okay, so that's on there, good. And then I have my pump here ready to submerge. Okay, so it's ready to go. That's tight, this is tight. So it's not plugged in, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it in first. This is our first four gallons. And we have 10 feet of hose here, so we may wanna shorten that at some point, but for now we're gonna run with it. And then this is gonna pressurize the tire, so we don't wanna let it get too out of hand. Okay, so there it goes. You can see it going through the line. And looks like we're just gonna to have to kind of get this primed up. Okay, we're leaking just a little bit. You see this, we're leaking. And it's kind of hard to see it in the, in the tube, but it's definitely going through because I can, I can see it on my hand. There's your bubble, so it's farting back the pressure or burping back the pressure to be more proper. So I'm gonna just screw this on a couple more turns. And we're not gonna take this on and off very often, okay? We're gonna leave this on. That's why we got a clear hose. You can get gas line, but it's extremely hard to thread onto this stuff. So then you're gonna have to buy adapters. And, uh, okay, so here goes nothing. Okay, so there it goes. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the camera, give you guys a close-up shot. You can see it's definitely flowing through. And it's coming all the way up here. Got just a little bit of dripping. Okay, I can live with that. Just a couple of drips here, no big deal. And you'll see the, the fluid level is coming down slow. But it's definitely going into the tire. You guys hear that? That's the fluid. So remember, the whole idea behind doing this is to translate that stack of bottles of fluid into these four tires. And what that's going to do is that's going to make this tractor more stable and keep yours truly from dying. Slash get better traction. So we'll just uh, set you guys right here. And we'll show you the process as we fight through it. 
you got to run this for a few minutes. I'm going to get some more bottles ready to rock and roll. We have become content with the fact that we are at 7.85 pounds instead of our uh, Google quoted 8.34 pounds. That is about a 5% differential. So the 200 pounds that I told you we were going to get out of this is actually going to end up being about 190 pounds or just shy of it. 190 pounds is definitely 190 pounds more. So this will be another gallon. Remember guys, this pump is going to warm up if you don't keep it submerged. So if you keep it submerged, that's good. Now I'm noticing some bubbles coming back through. Before I continue that, I'm just gonna go ahead and unplug this, this pump and watch the bubbles, okay? There, it just shot back through the line. We're just letting the pressure come out of the tire, okay? Once this stops bubbling, then we're good to go. So I'm just gonna dump as I go. So this process seems really daunting when you're watching it on YouTube. And the only reason it's daunting is because it's a pain in the butt to film this sort of stuff. It's just a tight spot in my case, and you know, it's cold out, so can't do it outside very good. Ooh, it had some air bubbles still. Having trouble overwhelming the air pressure, so we're gonna let that keep doing its thing for a minute. There it goes. Takes just a second to kick in on this pump. Remember, this is a one-sixth horsepower pump. It is like the crappiest pump you can buy um, that's still considered in the sump pump utility section. So don't sit there and worry about that thing blowing up your tire. Give me a break. It's gonna blow off that hose before it blows up your tire. Um, I would just be amazed. And I, yeah, I'd be really amazed actually because it'd probably blow up in my face. So if you're concerned, just run it for a period, check the pressure. In fact, we can even stop it and do that just to help put you guys' mind at ease. Because you'll be surprised how little the pressure changes, even though this thing is capable of producing a little bit of pressure. Okay, so that's gonna give us a total of six gallons so far. And uh, it's deceiving because there's some drips on the back of my line here. It makes it look like it's not going in, like there's nothing in the line, but there's totally stuff in the line. In fact, just for TV's sake, because if it doesn't happen, I'm gonna show you something guys. This is gonna be a new test for you. So we can let that fart for a minute. I'm gonna just go ahead and unscrew this here because I want you guys to be able to see this and experience it with me. That's the whole point of a YouTube, YouTube experience, right? So I have to hold, in my case, I have to hold my valve stem in order to spin this off, okay? Because the valve spin, the valve stem spins, being that it's not under pressure, okay? So I'm just gonna twist this carefully off I don't want to damage the actual valve stem. And that's one thing I can say is they had a 20 foot chunk of this. And if you had a, see there's the air pressure, but hardly any. Now watch this guys. I just want you to see that this is working. I'm going to point that down into the bucket and plug it in. See that guys? Man, that makes you want to go. So there you go. That's what's happening, except it's going in here. You guys hear? That is so cool. I'm super happy with this. So anyway, I'm going to get this stuck back on here right now. I'm going to give it a couple backward twists. And that makes it a little easier to twist on. By the time we're done with a four tire, this thing is probably going to be all reamed out and super easy to get on there. But it's also probably going to leak a little bit more. So keep that in mind as you work. All right, plug this thing back in, let it work. Okay, there it goes. And then keep your empty so you remember how many you put in. All right, folks, we'll pause it and come right back. Okay, guys, so basically our level's coming down again. This is working out really sharp. I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. I know sometimes on YouTube, you'll see some people do things that you think are gonna be really easy and then you go try to do it and it's really hard. And then sometimes you see people do it on YouTube and it looks really hard and then it turns out to be super easy because they were real idiots. So most of my videos might be like that. <laughs> but anyway, this is super, super fast, really easy. For 35 bucks less, you can do it with gravity, but it's a real pain in the neck because every time you do something, you gotta lift and then compress this to make a vacuum so it sucks the product back in. Um, in fact, I'm having to work pretty quick. Okay, so that's gonna be 
That's number seven. This is gonna be number eight, okay? I need to probably let this fart here, or excuse me, burp. Burp is the correct terminology. You pull that out of the water if you don't want all the bubbling. You guys hear that? So just to give you an idea, you don't have to worry about it like it's gonna blow it up or something. It's just not gonna, it doesn't have enough power to do that. Um, so while that bubbles, we'll get number eight in there. Now this tire at 75% full is supposed to hold 8.3 or 8.4 gallons. I believe it was 8.3. And again, that was one of those things I did on my own research. I just looked out on the World Wide Web and found what I needed to find. And uh, if I'm short, then I will add more. If I add more, then I'll let you know. I would love to add more because that'll make up for the 5% short because of Google's uh, typo on the weight of this stuff. Okay, done bubbling, back to work. Good deal. You can see the bubbles kind of working their way in there. That's maybe not so ideal, but no big deal. All right, guys, we'll, go on, we'll come right back. Let you see when it's all done. Okay, folks, so we're getting done with, this is gonna be number eight. We're just kinda making sure we don't have any excessive leaks. Just a little teeny bit of puddle here. It's just windshield wiper fluid. It's not gonna, it's not gonna kill anything except for maybe the dog. So don't let your dog get it, let it dry out before you let the dogs out. I think some animals think it's toxic. There's little whirlpools going on here. I'll show you that real quick. Which is pretty cool. Do not want to drop my phone in there. That's right, we do all our filming on our phones. This is a Galaxy S9. Oh, that's cool, look at that. And then you can see really good here, there's bubbles, or not bubbles, but my finger, and then just a little puddle. That's not bad, considering I don't have a proper fitting there. So this thing's gonna run out of uh, pushing force here in just a second, it's gonna start gargling. Now, you're probably thinking, how do you tell what 8.3 pound or 8.3 gallons is? You've got a whole gallon here. Well, there's a couple different ways you could do that. The first of which, and I want you guys to get a, get a shot of this as it's working, so I wanna make sure we're in camera. Okay, so basically the first thing you can do is you can guesstimate. The second thing you can do is you can overdo it a little bit with an understanding that you're gonna have some of that product is not gonna make it in because the pump can only pick up so low. So let's go ahead and burp this again. Now watch what happens, it sucks all that, all that fluid back through. Okay, so whatever was lost in there, from here to there is back in. That's 10 feet of this at, what, a quarter inch? So it's a very little product. We're just gonna let that burp. The bubbles help you guys to see it, so I'm gonna go ahead and let it burp. Now, watch what happens when I turn this thing. I'm gonna take and move this so we, Wow, that's a lot heavier. Whoa. Now watch what happens. Watch the liquid. It's gonna start coming out here. Wait, we might be under pressure still. So I don't know if it's gonna come out as good as I want it to. I would love it if the dubbers I got were wrong because that means I could put a lot more in there. Jeez, do you see where it started coming? That's crazy. See there it's starting to flow back in. I think what I'm gonna to have to do is I'll have to probably pull this off to show you that last step. So what I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead and, this is supposed to be a 75% fill, okay? So 75% full, for me, is kinda of like 25% off the target, but you do need a little bit of air in your tire, you're gonna lose all your springiness. There's not really a suspension on these things, per se, other than the tipping front one. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in the ninth gallon here, okay, the whole thing. You're probably thinking to yourself, but Brian, that thing only holds 8.3. I know, that's why I'm putting in the whole ninth one. Wait, so once we get this ninth one thin, you notice it's not running. That's all intentional, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and let this start pulling in what it can pull in. My guess is the information I got was wrong, which would just make my day, even though I gotta go spend more money on this crap. I already bought two more of them today. Um, the price is still good today, so it's no big deal. Um, but as you can see, when I go to pull this thing off, I'm gonna make sure you guys can see this, okay? So here's the tire at full 12 o'clock. I'm gonna back this thing off, right? Of course, the pump is off. What would have been smart is another barb here so I could spin this quick and easy without being physically attached and make it a lot easier to spin this thing off. Because what's happened is I'm fighting 
kind of the pressure and I'm trying to be nice. So just a little bit of air came out. Now watch what happens, guys. The fluid level is gonna be somewhere on here. You could take hot water and run it on this tire and you'd be able to see a line. But I'm just gonna twist this. That's about where it should be. Good Lord, guys, where's all this fluid going? Are you kidding me? What? That's crazy. That means I could put like a ton more in this tire. Um, I either re, I counted wrong or I looked up wrong, but either way I am thrilled because that means I can put a lot more weight in here. And after all, my whole objective in doing this is to get weight into these tires. And so if I could put more in there, I'm all about it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pumping more in and I will come right back and I'll show you basically what's gonna happen is when this hits here, or maybe even like here, I want it to start dumping out, okay? Because remember, we got this huge volume here. We want to fill it in with as much liquid as possible with the understanding that it's not going to freeze because it's going to minus 35, okay? So look how far down I am, guys. Look at that. I'm like here, halfway. That is excellent. That means I could probably put like, I don't know, like 16 gallons in here. It's going to cost me more, but that's perfect because this is by far the cheapest way to get weight on this thing. So... Guys, it's huge what just happened. So I'm super happy to share this with you and I will let you know the numbers as soon as I get up there. I will show you how it ends as well. All right, folks, we're back again. Just continuing on this operation. We are to the point now where I am on my 13th and 14th bottle. Uh, they haven't been opened yet. We're gonna see, I think we'll probably get close to full. It's pretty tight, so we're gonna go ahead and bleed the pressure off. So that means we'll just basically pop this out, let it go real quick. Okay. And you're probably thinking to yourself, Brian, you said it was gonna take 8.3 gallons. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> That's what I thought too. So I am super, super thrilled because this thing is working flawlessly. You'll notice I'm keeping the plug just got an extension cord going over the wall, nothing special. I happens to have a timer because I was running that wonderful little space heater, but I don't want to overload the circuit and have to run down to the basement and reset it while I'm filming. But you can see right now, okay, so I have a total of 12 bottles in here, okay? Unplugged, and then I would say maybe there's one full bottle left in there. So let's call it somewhere between uh, 11 and 12 full bottles. And I'm just gonna turn this until the fluid starts coming out. Oh, there it is, guys. That is crazy. Look how much I can get in there still. There, it just started. So that means I can go way more. I can probably get what's in here, which what's in here right now without any problems. So we're gonna try that. And guys, there's no gimmicks, there's no tricks here. I'm not trying to sell you anything. Although this is like the cheapest way to ballast your tractor. Plus you don't put any weight on the frame. You put it just on the tires. Okay, so we're going to get that going again. Obviously, the airspace gets smaller here as you fill the fluid up, okay? So at some point, there's going to be a quicker pressure buildup, and so it's going to have to burp more frequently at that point. So just keep that in mind. I'm just going to try to get you guys a good view. And so we're getting a little bit low. I'm sort of reluctant to open number 13, but I think I might have to because it is incredible how much it takes to fill this tire. I'm super happy about it, by the way, too. Okay, so you see it's kind of dripping a little bit more than it had been. So let's put a little bit more in there just to see if it wants to force it in. I don't want to blow it all over the room is the only thing. So this is number 13 I'm putting in right now. So I'm just going to dump it in and I can always just let it feed back into the tank. Or put this bottle underneath the spout. And guys, if you don't, this goes without saying, you know, I know I'm not the first guy in the world to do any of the stuff on my channel just about, but uh, we all have our own little spin on it. So this is my spin on it. And I hope I don't, I don't want you guys to be upset with me if you've done this before. I don't mean to take any of your, your uh, thunder. So let's go ahead and shut it off. Let it, let it burp again. Okay, so we got that unplugged. Gonna go ahead and let that burp. Not burping much, you know why? Because we got liquid coming out now, look. See? 
That's, that's probably a good thing. That means we're full. So goodness gracious, guys. I think we probably ended up with, and I don't want to siphon it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hold this up high so that it's up high enough that it breaks the siphon if there is a siphon, okay? So you see this? Just raise it up. And then I'm going to lift up the pump to bring air in. So that's going to that's going to put an air pocket in the siphon if there's a siphon. So I would make it so you could see, but I can't really do both at the same time. Because my camera crew abandoned me. It's okay. She does a good job doing her stuff. All right, so still coming out a little bit more. We'll just do, let it do its thing. But actually what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and switch over, take this thing and just rotate it. There it goes. There it's just a little bit. There it's solid. There it's just a little bit. I think we've got it, guys. I think we're there. I'm just going to let it bleed off the little sloshiness at the top. Might as well just leave it in here. And then what I'll do is while we're waiting, because it's going to take forever otherwise, I'll just go ahead and undo this valve here. Let the let it go through that. This is a pretty good little tool. Wowzers. Ooh, pretty exciting. Just kind of squirting everywhere. See, my wife misses out on all the fun stuff. Um, and you can see it going through the hose really nicely. So now, now that that's off, I'm just going to lay this down. I'm just going to show you this. Watch this, guys. So as I rotate this, you'll see when I hit the water level or the fluid level, it's going to start flowing. What the heck? There must be... You know what it is? I wonder if there's just enough of a break because of that. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to let this stuff drain out before it's gonna allow it to come out easily. See what just happened? It's totally siphoning this. And that little bit of drip, that's probably, I would say half a cup if that. So here's what I'm gonna try to do. It's probably not gonna work as good as I hope it will, but I'm gonna try it anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and just try to work this off. I'll just leave this thing right in the bucket because it's all clean, this stuff is clean. It's cleaner, for goodness sakes. Better be clean. So I'm just gonna unscrew this. And I got it way on there this time. And I'm kind of getting the hang of unscrewing this nicely, okay? Guys, under no circumstances during this whole operation did I feel unsafe about the pressure in the tires. I was nervous about that when I was thinking about this process, but it just wasn't an issue at all. Oh, there goes. Just a little bit of puking left. Just gonna catch it here. See that, guys? Just a little bit coming out, no big deal. Now watch this, when I get to the water level, see where it stopped, now it's increasing. Now it's a solid flow. Now it slows down. And it just about stops, but it doesn't quite. So there is like about the top. So I'm just gonna squish it a little bit. Try to get that out of there a little bit. Just kind of get that out of there, or we'll just slosh it a little bit. Jeez, that's so much more weight than an empty tire. This is definitely not my idea, but I'm really happy with the way it worked out. Really happy. That is way more than I thought I was gonna get. So I will go ahead and catch this so I don't bore you with the process. And I don't want to waste any more than I have to, but you can see, guys, we had a little bit of spillage. Like I said, probably a cup or, you know, a cup and a half, something like that. Not much. And I could just cap it off, but I need to put air pressure back in it, folks. So I think the better option would be to just go ahead and let, let a little bit out fast like this. Just kind of let that stream go fast from like way under the water. And then I'm going to come over here back to the top. There we go. Just dripping a little bit still. Give it a nice little stream. Okay, now it's stopped. Sort of. Come on, make up your mind. There we go. Okay, so now we must be at about 12 o'clock right now. Okay, so that's full. That tire is... 
They call it 75% full. I don't know if it's actually 75% full, but this is 13, okay? Just a little teeny bit. And then 14, not even touched. And then don't forget, we have quite a bit over here because that volume, that could be close to two. So even if I got 10 guys is huge compared to 8.3 gallons. Um, 10 gallons is way more weight. And when I say way more weight, I mean, I could qualify that by doing math but not right this second. So we'll come right back, show you how to do the air pressure. Okay guys, so we got the air compressor going to build up pressure and we're just gonna go ahead and test. Keep in mind that some fluid could come out of here because it's pretty high and you can hear that thing hissing because I have a really nice setup. That's a hilarious joke. Okay, so we got zero pounds of pressure. Feels like maybe I'm losing most of my pressure here. Oh, you know why? It's because I don't have this thing stuck back in, guys. I don't have the valve core, my apologies. Rookie mistake. So that goes back in real simple. See how that mates up there? Just kind of slide that in. That's what happens when you fix your own diaphragm on a compressor. Okay, so now that's in there. Now we should be able to test the pressure, which is gonna be zero. Yep, zero, big surprise. Doesn't take long to fill it now. Okay, we're not quite to the PSI marker. This is one of these steps where people forget on YouTube. Okay, so we're already at 10 pounds. Did you guys see how fast that went? So let's go ahead and find the marker that tells us how much to use. Okay, so on the side of the tire, you can't spin it around now. You gotta test it in the upright position. Okay, where does it actually say? 20 PSI maximum. So I'm gonna run it back to where it had been. I'll probably go ahead and run it at, at 15 or so. Kind of the happy medium. Okay, we're about 12. That is incredibly fast, holy crappers. Okay, so 15, actually, you know what? It's cold, so it's gonna shrink when it warms up. So I'm gonna go right up almost to 20, okay, folks? So that's, that's. ooh, excuse me. We'll go just a little bit more. Okay. 15 plus one is 16. Okay, so we're at Probably about 19, 18 and a half, 19, okay? And for those of you in kilopascals, oops, whatever that is. Okay, so this tire is technically done. Now remember, don't check your tire pressure with the valve stem over here, okay? Because fluid is going to come out and it's gonna be a mess and you're gonna be like, Brian, darn you, Brian. All right, so the next step is the front wheel. Okay, okay so I guilt trip my camera crew back into helping me for a minute. Um, because what I need to do is I need to go downstairs and measure uh, exactly how much fluid we didn't put in here so that we can tell you guys at home how much we put in this back wheel. Now, if you were alone, you could just use what you use and then, you know, put it in your car or whatever over time, you know, because that's kind of what I would do, except that I'm filming this. So I'm just trying to kind of get all the excess out of this hose, only for an accurate measurement. It's not like you have to do this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the pump out. There is probably going to be a little teeny bit of inaccuracy just because there's so much um, fluid that is still left inside of this hose, guys. And I'm not gonna go through a ton of trouble to clear it out, okay? So we'll just lay that down carefully in this puddle of like extra clean floor on my garage floor. And then I'm just gonna pick up the sump I'm not going to run it or anything. I'm not going to try to, you know, be that specific here. Okay. So we're just making sure it's mostly empty. And you can see, we've, like I said, we've lost maybe a cup to a cup and a half. I would say would be a conservative measure. We never did even use the clamps. So you can forget about that. That was a waste of time. <laughs> um, I mean, in terms of the hardness factor on this, it's awkward, all spring and hardness. Um, 
this has been really easy. The only hard part is not having my awesome camera crew. <clears throat> Let's go measure Sorry. this. So we aren't gonna be able to have an empty incorporated or taken out of this. But yeah, look at that guys. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 gallons minus a factor of 7.85 pounds to represent one gallon and then whatever the empty weight of this container is. So we'll go ahead and pause and show you on the scale. Okay. okay guys, so like I said, we don't know exactly what this empty weighs, the empty container and the lid, but we have about 20.9 pounds. So I would figure on at most there's two gallons in there uh, because two gallons would be 7.85 times two would be, well, I guess basically figure on eight, it's gonna be 16 pounds. So what do we have? 13 we counted. So 13 minus one would be 12, minus two would be 11. So somewhere between 10 and 11 gallons. And you were? And we were expecting 8.3. Wow. That's awesome, as far as I'm concerned. Now remember, it's cold. When things warm up, it may get a little bit bigger because just the barometric pressure, all that stuff, it's gonna get a little bit bigger as it warms up. So it's not freezing cold, it's just cool mm. in our garage. Well, yeah, that's true. Outside is cold. Yep. So we'll go ahead and obviously use this for another tire. Now the front tires are supposed to receive between three and four gallons. So we know we have enough to run that pump. And so we should be good to go. So I'll show you the next step is gonna be getting that front tire done. But just so you guys all understand, the chart online, which I believe was just basically for the beet juice, suggested that we would have 8.3 three pounds and it was correct for the correct size of tire i made sure everything was right on that they were incorrect by a tune of two gallons that's incredible um i would figure it's probably 10.3 or 10.5 gallons that we got in there so we'll come right back upstairs okay okay so obviously we need to get the jack off of here so we can put the weight back on the tire okay so we're gonna do that now we'll just slowly let it down we'll just leave it in place because we're gonna do the other side Okay, so we don't even need to totally pull it out. So we'll just leave that ready to go for the next one. Now, I think what I'm gonna do, because I'm lazy, is I'm gonna probably use a loader to pick it up. So we'll just go ahead and prime this, or excuse me, not prime, but we'll just let the glow plugs warm up a little bit. And then shut it off. Because again, we're not rocket scientists here. We don't need it to be perfect. We just need the weight off of it. Unfortunately, that wasn't quite enough. So we'll have to do just a little bit more <laughs> effort to get that to go. because this is free and we have in neutral obviously if I was in drive it wouldn't have started and I probably would have killed myself so just be careful if you're doing this stuff guys you're dealing with heavy machinery that can hurt you um, and I, I don't say that in jest even though I do a lot of jesting <laughs> so now that we know we can put a lot more in there that means I'm gonna have to go back to my favorite store Menards and get some more so I can do the other side but for the moment we're gonna go ahead and get this one done, the front tire, because nobody ever talks about doing front tire. Why would you do a front tire? First of all, wait for the overall tractor weight. That's important when you carry a heavy implement on the back, because remember, this is a pendulum, okay? Typically, people say the front end loader is enough to counterweight any sort of three-point. Well, what if you take off the bucket when you're running, you know, like taking hay or something, like what we're gonna do? Or, you know, if you're doing a planter or something, you just want it out of the way. You want to be able to counterbalance it, and this is by far the cheapest way to do it. So I'm going to take advantage of this, and then later on, if I need more weights, I'll put them up here, I'll get some suitcase weights, which, by the way, are crazy expensive too. They're like 50 bucks a pop for the 41 pound weights. And, uh, but, you know, such is life. Stuff is heavy, it's expensive, get used to it. Anyway, uh, so we'll go ahead and show you this process right now. It's just like the back, we're going to get the, uh, going to get the wheel set up so that we can see the valve stem, except I can't see it. Okay, so we're just going to pull the cap off, 
Then the first thing we're going to do is I'm actually going to get off of this thing. I'm going to get off of that thing because it's too far down or too, too far up in this case. I'm going to just make sure I can see what I'm doing. I want to test the air pressure. This thing is such high quality that I literally broke it testing the air pressure on the back tires. <laughs> so I just got done gluing it back together. Okay, so, oops, let's go over here. Okay, so this one's set to, again, about, I'm gonna call that about 18 PSI. And before we get started, we'll just look here so we can spin it around. Max inflation, 150 kilopascals or 22 PSI. So I'll probably run that one about 20. I tend to like a firmer ride on my vehicles. I know people are, you know, screaming at the screen right now saying, why would you want it to be firmer? Well, there's a lot of things you can do when it's firmer. So anyway, um, I'm gonna have this pointed down. I'm gonna take the handy dandy tool. I'm gonna do it blind, guys. You might as well learn to do it while you can. So, oh yeah, it's coming out, guys. Now, I don't wanna take this off the bead, so I'm gonna be nice and gentle. And remember, we're not gonna get that much weight out of this front tire because it's a whole lot smaller tire. So I'm expecting to get between three and four gallons of liquid into this tire. And then also keep in mind, at the end of this whole process, just let me go slow, guys. Because I, I don't want it to come off the bead. That's going to be a, a pain in the butt. If it comes off the bead, then I'm not going to be able to put liquid in there, eh? So, sorry, my, oh, no, don't you come off the bead, you little turd lover. So, I'm going to stick this on here quick and see if I can create a little bit of resistance. Um, and it's a lot easier to screw this on now than it is to screw it on later. Now, you don't have to have it at the full 12 o'clock position the entire time you're doing this. It does kind of make it, you know, like you won't forget. But you can, you can put it at whatever position you want right now. But it's just easier to do this. Camera crew, since you're standing here, do we have a good angle? When you guys are trying to figure out a good angle, just make sure you get good feedback. I can see your nuts now. Oh, dang it. <laughs> That's awkward. The whole world's watching. Be careful, all 17 of them. Yeah, I was gonna say. So, guys, I know this is about the 457th video of doing this, but I haven't <laughs> seen anybody put them in the front tire yet. Well, uh, actually I did, Never mind. I lied. The, the Undertaker did that. So, anyway, sorry Undertaker. I don't mean to steal your sunshine. But your comments were disabled. Why? I wanted to give you a positive remark. Okay, so that's on there. This pump, and by the way, if you guys are in YouTube land and you can't handle some negativity, you're probably in the, lot, the wrong line of work because that's like half of what you get when you run a YouTube channel is people saying how stupid you are and all that, and I just don't really care what people think. <laughs> so we're just going to stuff this on here real quick. Let it get seated. And then we're going to plop that in there like this. Remember, we have approximately two gallons in here, and we're going to go ahead and start it. Just kidding. I wanted to scare my wife. It didn't work. Okay, so. Pump's running. Fluid level's dropping in this container. And you can see we're getting a little bit of drip back, just like we did on the last one. No big deal. Manageable amounts of moisture. And, uh, hun, yeah. would you run and make the lights turn on for the uh, garage door opener? Or go hit the button. We have, okay, so we have these LEDs up here. It's hard for you to see, but they're split off on splitters, okay? And then we have a bunch of lights in the, the actual lights. And so, obviously when we're filming, we wanna have as much light as possible. They like to shut off, like, you know, usually about the time I'm putting diesel in the machine, the lights shut off and it will wake you up quick, I'll tell you, especially when you're dumping explosive chemicals, wait. I guess diesel would be explosive per se, unless you put it in an engine. Well, that would be messy. I would never do that. Okay, unless it was for a YouTube video. Right. Just kidding, guys. I care about the environment and trees and things. Just wait till you see my next video. <laughs> anyway, um, so we're just gonna put some more in here. This is pretty simple stuff. Shoot, I could have marked it. This thing is 31 quarts. Why didn't we do that? Yeah, but where? I don't know. We could have taken one gallon and marked the side. That would have been smart, but we are not evidently that thing. 
at least I'm not. My camera crew is smart. Sorry. Um, can take that back. So anyway, guys, we're going to run this. It's going to be just like the last show. The one that someone's like, whoa, whoa. They look almost exactly the same, except this one's small. This one's big. This one's filling up. Uh-oh, uh-oh. It's kind of increasing frequency of, of uh, pulsation. What should I make of that? Watch this. Let's let it burp. Oh, it's vigorous this time. Eh. Oh, dang it. Dang tootin'. I'm kind of touching the ground now because the uh, hydraulic pressure is bleeding off. You would do this on camera. Okay, so we're going to get some more fluid and we're going to come right back. Okay, guys, so from our math before, we figured on using about 10.3 to 10.5 gallons in that tire. This tire, we are currently, we have three gallons poured into this vessel plus what's in the tire, okay? So we're going into our fourth. Okay, so that's important because we need to be able to know about how much we put into this. Now, we know we're going to use this, so it's not a big deal to put a little extra in, but I don't want to put a bunch of extra in now in case I get pulled away from this job, right? So still a little bit of uh, air coming through the lines. I'm going to go ahead and turn this wheel and just wait. See, what's happened is the weight came back on because the cylinders dropped. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and jack up the machine and then come right back. Okay, folks, so I just lifted it up a lot more so I can get like way better here and now I can turn it there's the water level so it's way down here guys so what I want to do is I want to get a wood block so we can pull this up and hold it level okay so folks you can see I just put this wood block down under here and that just holds the axle square basically now that I have the brake set I can actually pivot this with the loader a lot easier so before I had the brake unset because I needed to be able to spin these. Well, these things spin free because they're not engaged. Well, it doesn't spin free when it's sitting on the block, but you guys get the idea. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just pick it up from the axle because it tips, it's a front axle. Now, if I had my four wheel drive engaged, this thing would also be locked up. Or if I had my locking differential, I don't know if the front locks. I think it's just a rear axle. So we'll go ahead and keep going, plugging it back in, watch it come through. Going into the tire with ease, having no problems at all. The only problem is trying to film all this crap. And to be perfectly honest, if you guys run a YouTube channel or if you've ever watched a YouTube video, you could probably imagine how that would be if you were the one on the other side of the camera. Of course, I like doing this stuff. It's just a lot more work when you film it. Um, so just in case anybody ever asks you about it, why would they ask you about it unless you have a YouTube channel? All right, so anyway, here we go. So this is gonna be the fourth gallon that we have dumped in. That does not mean, that does not mean that we are gonna end up with four full gallons in this tire, which I do believe we will. Um, it just means that we have currently opened the containers of these, okay? So while that runs, I'll go grab another one or two. So this will be the, the fifth jug or the fifth gallon that we're going to have prepared. And really, we just don't want to overfill it a bunch because it's kind of a mess, okay? It'd be nice if there was a power switch on this or if I got one of those power strips, I could just turn this on and off without unplugging it. Okay, so just letting the air out. Back to work, a lot quicker in this smaller tire. Ooh, a lot of air getting forced in, I don't like that. That was not very wise. Okay. So knowing that we got 10 point something gallons in the back wheels, it's just invigorating to me. That means we're probably gonna get a heck of a lot more weight into this machine doing this method than I expected originally we'd get. A um, couple drawbacks to the liquid filled tires. Um, obviously if you're using calcium chloride, you'll rust out your rims uh, after about 10 years is what they say. Kind of depends on your climate, I suppose. Um, but in this case, this shouldn't rust out your rims, shouldn't freeze, especially at the minus 35, unless of course you have temperatures that below 90, uh, minus 35. 
And uh, really the only drawback would be if you have a tire that gets a flat, you may kill your grass. This stuff is somewhat toxic. So toxic. Now you can get some different products that are gonna be less or differently toxic. That's your call. I'm not really expecting to get a flat to where it's gonna be that egregious. My hope is I can uh, get it cleaned up right away, not have a big issue. So, but we'll see. There's lots of toxic vehicles and uh, lots of toxic chemicals and vehicles. I know people don't like to talk about it, but we live on planet Earth. There's lots of things that are toxic for, for lots of reasons. And uh, I guess I don't really want to propagate lots of them, but this is a means to an end. Well, that is a heck of a lot more toxic than this stuff. I can tell you that. All right, so we'll go ahead and cut the pressure again. Okay, there goes the, the air. And I'm not gonna make you watch this. The pain and suffering will be over after this end, okay? I can definitely feel that pressure's out of there. You do not need to massage the tire. The water is gonna find the bottom. No matter what you do, Oh, it's a lot heavier. Holy crappers. Oh, there it goes. So technically I could probably, I could probably call that good, but I'm going to go ahead and force a little bit more in there. We're so close. No sense in doing this halfway, right? So I could tell that the water, water level was about here. So I want to try to bring it up just a little bit more. And I suppose if a guy did this a bunch or a gal did this a bunch, you could get to a point where you would know kind of what you're looking at in terms of you know how much a drop in this bucket is going to equate to how much goes into a, a given tire but it take a lot of practice so process is going to be identical to the back tire but i'll just run you through this one first okay so i think it's worth trying now it goes quick at the end okay so letting that come out you can notice it's running for a long time that means we overshot that's good in my opinion so now i'm just gonna Work that as close to 12 o'clock as I can. Just let it kind of do its thing. Give you guys an extreme close up. See, it's really coming out. Really bubbling now. And then of course we're left with about what we had before, probably about 20 pounds or so. So if we had 20 pounds or so, which ends up being about, I did the math on my paperwork, ends up being about 2.66 gallons, then one could conclude that we're actually a little bit more accurate on this measure because we have one, two, three and a half, you know, somewhere in there between two and a half and three and a half, just on guesstimation terms. Doesn't seem to be running a lot because there's an air gap in here and I don't see bubbles. So we'll go ahead and break the seal just let that drain down a little bit more yet. Okay, and then you see how it's kind of, just gonna let that run out. And then I don't wanna damage this. You see when I'm moving this around, that valve stem suffers a little bit. So I wanna try to be nice to it as I can be. So at this point, I'm gonna try to lift this up just a hair and spin it. And like we did before, we'll just look for when it starts flowing. It's not starting to flow, so my guess is what we're gonna have to do is similar to last time, we'll have to get a jug and catch a little bit of extra. Um, it's, it works pretty good to do that. You basically get the jug, you get the top off, you make sure you don't have any of this metal stuff, this uh, foil. I want that to fall back in. And then I'm just gonna carefully unscrew this. There's gonna be a little bit of spillage, it's not a big amount. You can see right here, guys, it's just barely any. Um, I mean, you got to remember, this stuff sprays on windshields, okay, don't forget, we spray this on the windshield so we can clean the bugs off of them, even in electric cars, folks. So if you have an electric car, you still clean your windshield, so don't get too upset with me. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. It's coming off just fine. I think it's kind of slowed down a little bit. I can see a little bit of a snake going there. You guys see that snake? That's cool. You guys see that snake I'm talking about? That is so cool. It's just the polarity of water will do some cool things. Now we're probably down to about a drip. And so I kind of hate to mess with it. But I am going to go ahead and mess with it because you know me, I can't leave anything alone. You can't leave well enough, well good enough. I don't even know how to say the catchphrase. 
There it is. Oh, don't you spit on me. Okay, so now I can lift the tire, give it a twist, let it drain just a hair, slowing down real quick. There's a lot less volume in this tire, as you can imagine. You don't have to imagine it. You watch to get filled. Then I'm going to put you right back to about 12 o'clock. And you'll notice it's just barely dripping, okay? Just barely coming out. This is just a little stream coming out. So I'm just gonna kind of give it a squeeze or two. Okay, stop dripping. I'm sick of watching you drip. Okay, so it stopped dripping. There'll be just a, a little, little teeny tiny bit of dripping still, and I don't care. It's good enough. And so, we gotta put this core back in, okay? So as you can see, that's the core. And then these teeth line up with the core, just like that. You can kind of feed it in by hand if you prefer. I just am using the tool. Okay, so that's in there now. So now I can go ahead and uh, test the pressure, which is gonna be uh, zero, I hope. Derp, it's zero, weird. Okay, so we'll come back, put air pressure in it. All right, folks, so we're back. Remember, we want to get about 20 PSI in this tire. So I'll just find that right at 12 o'clock. Get her going. Okay, shouldn't take much. It's a small airspace now. A little bit more. All right, push that back in. Okay, that didn't work very good. There we go, so we're about 15. Okay, push it back in. Okay, about 18. Try again. There we go, about 22. I'm gonna leave it, I'm good with that. Keep in mind, your volume of air is going to be much smaller now that you've put liquid in here because liquid is incompressible, whereas air is compressible. So you have a little bit rougher ride. Okay, so folks, in closing, Thanks for watching. This process has actually been way easier than I expected. Looks like we got about what we expected up here, about three and a half gallons maybe. And then back here, we got about 10 and a half gallons. So if you figure on the balance, three and a half plus 10 and a half gives you what? That'd be what, 13, 14 gallons each. And so I'm just short a few more gallons and uh, ended up getting 22 last night. Uh, such a good deal, I got a couple for work. And then I decided to get two more for myself, thinking maybe I need a little bit more. I guess I'm going to get a little bit more yet tonight uh, if they're still open. And I just cannot believe how much weight we're going to be able to add. Uh, keeping in mind that if we add uh, 14 gallons on each side, that's 28 times uh, 7.98. And do these obnoxious lists, guys. These lists are how you make good decisions. Um, they will drive your wife crazy if you're married, um, or they'll drive yourself crazy if you're not. But just do your research, figure it out on your own after you watch somebody else do it on YouTube like me. And then where they fall flat on their face, you can avoid doing that. But as usual, guys, thanks for watching. We really appreciate your patronage here. Um, this is definitely not a radio-controlled airplane, but we do really like having you with us as part of our life. And we want to share it with you just because you're so awesome. Come back for more. Thanks for watching. So as usual, I said in closing, and I didn't mean in closing, I meant we're almost done. So we did some math. I went through the process of putting all the extra back in this. Now remember, we're just dealing with the left side of the tractor, so the left front and the left rear. Um, our math was very close before. We had 1.9 pounds um, or 1.55 for the empty container and then uh, 0 0.4 pounds for the lid. Okay, so 1.9 pounds was how it rounded. So don't freak out guys. I know those two don't add together, but there's a rounding error on scale just like everything else in, in the world, in the analog world, okay? So we have an analog to digital converter in there. Oh, I'm getting off topic again. So these two jugs, you'll notice they're completely full. Well, there was some spillage. And when I say some spillage, remember there's a little bit in front of the tires. And then when I was transferring them, there's just a little bit that got spilled. So the reason I want to show you this is that we had 1.9 from the 20.9 gross weight we measured earlier. Lid, empty container, 
empty container and lid plus what was left over on the rears, okay? So the rears we calculated at 20.9 gross minus the 1.9 of container gives us an exact 19 pound measurement worth of fluid, okay? That's a net product that was in that was left over. So if you divide that by um, the 13 gallons that we started with minus the 2.42 uh, gallons, that's 19 divided by 7.85, uh, pounds per gallon, then that that meant that we had uh, exactly 10.58 gallons in the back tire, okay? 10.5 is greater than 8.3. It is? Yes. Wow. So anyway, what we're left with is basically this is what we're left with on the front and the back. We have currently used up a total of, uh, oh shoot, how many gallons did we use so far? We have so many gallons that we've used so far, and we're going to answer that right now as though we knew it. So basically what we've got is 14 empties upstairs, and that means that we have some spillage. And you're probably like, well, Brian, how are you going to call that 14? You obviously used a little bit. You, you didn't lose, you didn't use the entire vessel of the 14th. That is correct. So technically we used 13 total full gallons, and then we used a partial. This is going to tell us the answer to that. For those of you who want hyper-specific results, so we're at 1.9 pounds. We're gonna tear that this time so we can switch back and forth. And this is gonna tell us exactly how much product um, we spilled, okay? Because there was some spillage. So we have two 14 gallon, we have 14 gallon, uh, 14 gallons that are empty. This will be the 15th and the 16th, okay? So of 16, then we can calculate exactly how much we had left over, okay? then we can derive exactly how much spillage we have. <laughs> because there was some spillage and I know you guys are gonna freak out if I don't calculate it. So, this is the other one. Okay, so this is gonna mean that we have 16 empty uh, containers, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry, it takes a second to do this, guys. I'd like to do it faster, but it's about as fast as you can do it without making a huge mess. Okay. So now that we've done that, we should find that it's larger than 7.85 times two, which it is, it's 16.5, right? So we have 16.5 pounds left over. We had 16 of the full containers. So you have to turn on the calculator. It'll be 16 full containers times 7.85. Is that what we figured on? Yep. So that would have been 16 times 7.85 on average equals 125.6 pounds. Okay, subtract that from it. That's the net amount of liquid in here, which is 16.5 pounds. Okay, so 125.6 minus 16.5 gives us 109 10 that we added on just one side so if we did our math right times two we're gonna end up with 218.2 pounds 218.2 pounds that isn't getting it isn't gonna be bared through the frame it's gonna be bared through the wheel itself and the tire yes a certain amount of that is gonna be bared through the frame I understand but less of it than if you do the ballast box so for a total of about hundred dollars total investment that we can use to refill them later and by the way, you can take this back out mostly. You probably aren't gonna get 100% of it out, but you can take it back out um, and you could reuse it again. It's not like you're gonna be drinking this stuff. And if you do, you may have a bad day. But anyway, 218 pounds. Guys, 218 pounds is pretty good, I would say, for and 100 bucks. And it doesn't take up any more space in our garage. Zero space in the garage, no added girth, which you will get with the $375 wheel weights. Even the starters stick out just a little bit from what I understand. So, and then if you put another 50 on there, on each side, it's gonna be way out there, like three inches or so. So, by far, best solution I've seen. Um, it's no BS. And by the way, the big error in measurement was on the rear wheels. Uh, the rim guard uh, chart, I finally remembered that, online, available online, just search for rim guard, which is the alternative to using this. It's about twice as expensive and you're gonna have to pay a shop, a shop rate of probably between $100 to $150 an hour to put that in. You're probably gonna pay for two hours 
somewhere between one and two hours for that. So you're gonna have five, 600 bucks in this. It's crazy, guys. So in this case, you can get $100, you can get um, about 218, or 218 pounds. So that's like less than 50 cents per pound. Is that right? Did I do the math right? I don't know, because I was calculating how much time you spent doing it, which hey, was like, no, oh. no, like tonight, oh, actual... it was like just over an hour and you were filming. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. I figured it'd be a lot more than that. No, it wasn't that so, bad. So, but guys, my talks, you know, 9718. Now, I am going to go to the store and I will have to buy, keep in mind, um, I bought a total, I ended up with a total of, for this, that was 24 gallons plus all the utilities. Um, I am going to spend an extra $4.18 for every two that I buy more. That's with tax and everything. So if I have to buy, what have I used so far? I said 16 mm -hmm. minus these two would actually be two full vessels, let's say. So I have 14 down so far and I have already purchased 24. So 14 from 24 means that I've got 10 left. So I'm going to have to go buy four more. Four more is going to be another $8. $8 on top of this is going to be 97 plus 8. So like $106. And if you had the sump pump or a pump sitting at home, yeah, you wouldn't you, have to buy a pump. You don't have to buy the pump, but I'll tell you what, the pump made it super easy. Yeah, it was, it was like way, fast. way easier. Yeah. And I mean, it was painful to watch this, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but at any rate, I'm really happy we did it. I hope you guys get some use out of this. Numbers matter to some people. Some people could care less about these numbers. They're like, whatever, I'm just going to throw it in there. Good for you guys. Um, but I like to know this stuff. So without further ado, come back for more. There's, guys. Somebody wanted to see this the other day. Let's give a quick view. This is oh, our geez. basement. It's in shambles. It right is. Now. My wife's area over there is Look, all nice. Yes, Look at this. see? She has a nice area. Yeah, Shelves, this is, bins, this is what happens when organized. Your helps you with nice projects. But anyway, so now come okay. over to my area just yep. so you can see how crappy it looks. This is this is how crappy it looks. <laughs> it's ugly and crappy. And uh, there's messes It's dirty. Everywhere. There's yep. dust on the floor. Over here, the only thing that's looking good right now is that this wall, I've got some of the planes started. And yes, some. there are a lot of planes on the wall, but we have a lot more, like 13 or 15 big planes that have to get hung up. Don't go that way. Like this thing? Yeah. So, in closing, guys, <laughs> you come here for RC, but you get so much more. <laughs> Thanks for watching.